Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360. In this video, I'm looking at creating an archive with a custom loop using dynamic content for Elementor. Surprisingly, Elementor doesn't have a way to create a custom loop for your archives or listings. Even Elementor Pro doesn't have this feature. This is something you need if you want to control the layout or include a custom field in the output. In this tutorial, I'll show you how simple this is using Elementor Core and the dynamic post widget that comes with dynamic content for Elementor. Two years ago, I wrote a tutorial about using the Elementor Custom Skin plugin with Elementor Pro for this purpose. The Elementor Custom Skin plugin is easy to use and has been a go-to solution. However, it requires Elementor Pro. Also, many people don't realize that if they have dynamic content for Elementor, then they don't need the Elementor Custom Skin plugin. The Dynamic Post widget gives you the same features and more. I have here a test site using the Bloxy theme. You can see I have some test posts, but I also have a custom post type called Books. I created the custom post type using Advanced Custom Fields and using Custom Post Type UI. And you can see I've entered a number of book records. So here's the custom post type in the editor. Note that the featured image is a portrait orientation. And then there are two custom fields. The first is a link to the author's website, a URL field. And the second is an image field, the author's photo. So this is what the default archive looks like. You can see it's a bit problematic. I think most themes are set up for featured images that are landscape and the book cover, which is portrait orientation, it's not set up to handle that. So that's one problem. And then we want to show a custom field here. Let's show the author's photo. And there's no way to do that by default with WordPress. So we're going to solve these problems using dynamic content for Elementor. Okay, so the first step is I want to go and create a template which is going to be the loop item. So I'll make this a section and we'll call this single book item. Okay, because this is a section, we don't have to worry about the title because only the section, what's inside the section is going to be showing. So we don't have to hide this title or anything. I'm going to move this over. So first thing, I'm going to add an image here. And then you notice that there's this dynamic tags. This is an Elementor Pro feature, but I only have Elementor Core installed. And dynamic content for Elementor enables dynamic tokens. It's similar to dynamic tags in some ways. And it works with Elementor Free or Pro. And so I'm going to use that. So that looks a little different than the Elementor Pro would look. Okay, and then we go here and we need to know the token for this, for the featured image. So you can use wizard mode and kind of search and generate the token. But I find that if you go to the help docs, there are several articles on tokens and one of them gives you lots of examples. And if we look down, we can see here's one for the featured image. So I'm going to do that and we will paste that in. And then it needs to be returned as data to work. Okay, now one thing here is you notice we don't see the preview. That's one of the advantages of using Elementor Pro is that you can see a preview and you can go into the settings and pick a preview. You don't have that option with dynamic content and Elementor Core. So I'm gonna show you a workaround where we can still kind of see what we're doing. But first I'm gonna make a stab at this. So we've defined the tag. Let's go to style, set this for pixel, pixel, and we'll say the width here is uh, 150 pixels and the height is 225. So I think that's about what a book cover aspect ratio is. So now I'm going to go here and add in a heading and this will be for the post title. Again, we're gonna use a token and look, the first one post colon title. So that's what we want, okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do 
is dynamic content comes with some helper widgets. So I'm searching here for excerpt and we see that. I'm gonna put that underneath. Okay, and then it has this option for advanced manipulation and we are going to generate the excerpts and we don't need an ellipsis because we'll have a read more button. So we'll go with that and let's save this now as a starting point. And now I'm going to open another tab. Okay, and I'm going to template and add new. And this one, we're gonna make a page. This is because we want it to be an archive. If we weren't doing an archive and we just wanted to show a list of book records with a custom field, we wouldn't need to do a page. But I'm gonna show you why we wanna use a page template a little further on. And we'll call this the book archive template page. Okay, now for this one, we do want to hide the title because this is gonna be our archive. So we'll hide the title and we'll do Elementor Canvas. Okay, and then let's add a section and we'll give it some margin here. So now we're gonna add the dynamic posts. Okay, and we want the new one, the version two. And here we have the posts. And this has a ton of options. Let's just look at them real quick. There's grid, grid with filters, carousel, dual carousel, timeline, 3D, grid to full screen 3D, and crossroads slideshow. So we're gonna go with grid. We can turn pagination on if we want. And then over here, this is the card style. So we have default, left, right, alter alternate, text zone, overlay, float, HTML and tokens, so you can intermix HTML and tokens if you want to do it that way. But here's a template. And for some reason, sometimes the option to pick the template doesn't show. But I noticed if I go to the next thing and then go back, see here's the option now to pick the template. So let's type in our book single. Here it is. Okay, and you see we have our, our image, the right size, but it's looking kind of funky here. All right. So let's go down to grid. We can do flex, masonry, or blog, but flex is good, but we wanna do one column. All right, so that's starting to look kind of like what we're expecting there. Now let's go to the query, and here we can use from post type, which is what we want, but there's also dynamic, ACF relationship, pods relationship, search and filter pro, from post parent, search page, from specific posts, and an ID list. So we wanna do books, and we want a post, we want it published. All right, so we're getting closer here. And we'll say eight results per page. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna publish this now, even though we're not quite done, and show you that kind of workaround thing I was talking about. Let's go back to the other tab here. Now this is our book single item. Now we can make changes here and then go preview them on the other page. So one thing I noticed was that there's a lot of space between the title and the excerpt. So I'm just going to go here on the excerpt and let's go to margin and set that to zero, padding and set that to zero, but unlink it on the top. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's better, we'll see. Okay, so now I think we're ready though to add our custom field. And to do that, I'm gonna do an intersection under the excerpt. Let's make this one smaller. Okay, so here we're gonna add an image, and this will be the author's image, the ACF field. And again, we're gonna use the dynamic token, but this time we need the ACF field and I think that's gonna be, I think we do ACF colon, and then the field name, which is author's photo. I think that's right. Okay, and we'll go to style, do pixels, and set it to 150 to make sure they're all the same size. And we'll center it here. Let's update that and just go back and take a look now. I've saved this, so I'm gonna refresh. Okay, so there's the author's photo. It's actually a little big. I think I should make it 100 pixels. And then we can add the read more button. 
So let's go back here to style and let's make it a hundred. Okay, and then this here we'll add the button and we'll change the text to read more. And the link now we'll do use the token again. And this time I think we want the permalink. So let's go back to the docs, see if we find the post permalink. Here it is. So I'm just gonna copy that and we'll paste that in here and we'll update that. And now let's go and refresh again. <laughs> okay, good. One last thing I'm gonna do here is let's do the section and give it a background, maybe a really light gray, like this maybe, just to make them stand out a little bit. Okay, we're almost done. Now I'm gonna go to the dashboard, and this is how we make it to be the archive, is Dynamic has a template system. And so we're gonna go there and we'll make sure it's enabled. Go to our books and then archive. And this is why we needed to do a template because Dynamic Content for Elementor is looking for a template. So we'll go here, book archive template, and we're gonna save that. Okay, now we go to the front end and there we go. We have our book archive has been fixed. The images look good and we have the custom field, the author's photo showing. So that's how you do this with dynamic content for Elementor. Okay, so we've done the walkthrough part now for a little discussion and conclusions. I think you can see that the shortcomings of using dynamic content for Elementor is that we don't get the preview that you get when you use Elementor Pro. So I showed a way to kind of work around that, but using the dynamic post widget with a template, it's pretty easy to get a custom layout and to show a custom field in the archive. So dynamic content for Elementor is flexible in that way. And you don't need Elementor custom skin and Elementor Pro, which is the way that I was doing this two years ago. That's my look at creating a custom archive using dynamic content for Elementor and the dynamic post widget. There's a text version available on the Elementor 360 website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. Hope you found the video helpful. Thank you for watching.